On this episode of Beer, Blues, and BS, Kidder and I are joined by JS Gunslinger. We're going to have a good time. We're going to be drinking some brews. We're going to be chatting about this, that, and the next thing, comparing weeks. Well, and let me just tell you, we've all kind of had an interesting week. We're going to share some interesting stories, to guaranteed to give you a laugh. And uh, JS wrestles with trying to figure out what's in this jar that of baby food that Kidder gave him. It's a good time. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of laughs. If you need a pick me up this week, we got it for you. And you're in a good place. So welcome to the show. It's Howard Blues and V Mark Kidder. For a cold beverage, for pussies, enjoy time with The friends. Triple B! Well, the Triple B sucks. Okay? Oh, come on. Whatever, man. This is Beer, Beer Blues, and BS. Online at BeerBluesBS.com. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Beer, Blues, and BS, the podcast that you can easily return for five cents in Iowa and other various states. I'm your host, the living embodiment of Charlie Brown, Howard Blues, here, as always, with my co-host, the man, the myth, the legend, the Mark Kidder. Kidder, how you doing tonight? Well, there, Jaco, <clears throat> I'm doing all right. You know, it's another day. It's the end of another week. And I am uh, very, very, very happy. Very happy to be here. Back on the show with you. Once again, doing the thing that we call the Triple B. Yeah, it's always a good night when the Triple B is uh, is recording. It's uh, I, I, was, I was looking for it. Although I did a lot of BS in today, Kidder. I was with a, a couple of uh, good coworkers, and we went up to Mysick. Uh, we're, we're trying to do some improvement up there. The, the grounds need a little help. Uh, and so we were up there to form a plan, make some priorities, and figure out what we, you know, staff could handle versus what we need to contract. So it was really about seven hours in the truck, BS and bantering back and forth, many good laughs, many good stories told. And uh, I'm looking to continue that with you here this evening. Hopefully we have another excellent show for everybody out there who's joining in. And uh, with that, we should we should just hop right in, Kidder, because I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit parched myself. Yeah, so let's kick it off with everybody's favorite segment of the show, What's on Tap. What are you having tonight, good sir? What is coming out of the Triple B beer fridge? Well, I have this. Well, I think I got this one. Is this one from you? Uh, no. Okay. That, that is not for me. I don't remember if I got it from Local Geek. So I think this is one I got. This is the problem. Like, oh, here's 12 beers. Here's 12 beers. Yeah, you need to try these. We're going to have them on the show. And I, then I buy my own, and I'm like, where did these come from? <laughs> you're going to have to start labeling them, man. Get the old Sharpie yeah. out and initial yeah, where right they're coming top. from. <laughs> uh, I, I think I may have picked this up in a six-pack of the Choose-A-Beer. But <laughs> it looks like there's an orange on the front. It's a Blackberry Hard Cider. From Two Towns Cider House. There you go. Nice look at the front with the tree and the orange and arrow. It is a 6% alcohol by volume made with Marion blackberries. 12 fluid ounces. No added sugar. Only fresh pressed Northwest apples. Always whole ingredients. The flavor profile for you serve chilled at 40 degrees. It's ripe and juicy. Made Marion unites Northwest apples with whole locally grown Marion berries. The crown jewel of all blackberry varieties, Marion berries are a true testament to the bounty of Oregon. Visit them online at the number two town cider house. Dot com to town cider dot com and this one officially from Corvallis, Oregon. 
friends from two nearby towns banded together on a mission to bring cider back to the people. True craft cider made using whole fruit and nor no shortcuts boldly crafted in Oregon. Lots of stuff on that layer little can. It was a lot of stuff. That was a small novel on that can. Surprised it didn't tell us how it got here. You know, into my fridge. Who did I get it from? Where did you come from, beer? Very nice scent coming out of it. Mm. Nice aroma. Aroma. Got the the bitterness of the blackberry. Mm. Ooh, that's nice. That that is dangerous. <laughs> mm. Very, very good blackberry profile. So remember the sparkling grape juice we get around Thanksgiving? Yeah. It's kind of like that, but a little extra sparkle. Mm. I, I don't know that I like that. I'm not a big fan of the sparkling grape mm. juice. Well, you know that I am. And obviously this isn't grape. It's blackberry. Yeah. Uh. I, I keep having relatives who keep like bringing that over, like at the holidays. Yeah. Like, and, and they bring like eight bottles. And it's like, then they're upset when like <laughs> I don't drink any. I'm like, no, I, I have, you guys have known me for how long have you ever seen me drink it? What? Maybe all the empty bottles that <laughs> were in our apartment <laughs> from me. Uh, yeah, I don't think my father-in-law was ever, uh, in your, apartment. yeah, that's true. So I, he, he's kind of the bigger offender of it. I, it's kind of one of those things. Like once you can have actual wine, it's kind of like, why would I drink? You know, like we actually had a holiday celebration of our education team at the, the society. And my boss brought in a couple bottles of that, and I refused. She's like, we're all going to have some and celebrate. I'm like, no. <laughs> I, I hate that stuff. I'm not drinking it. No. So. Um, but hey, I, I'm glad you like it, kid. Here you got. <laughs> uh, I actually have something from you. That's right. You. Uh, it, hey. Watch where you're pointing that thing. I, I've got my uh, junior has started doing that now. Hmm. The, the same yeah. like thing that you and I do where we make eye contact across the room and then point. Yeah. Good. Uh, I'm glad that I've rubbed off on him appropriately. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because we did that at his birthday party and he pointed at you and now he does it to me. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all good. Uh, uh, but anyway, this this is... From you, from your trip down to see old rude boy Kyle. I'm, I gotta, I gotta make room in the fridge because, like, you brought me drinks. Local geek has brought me drinks. I had drinks. Now I, we, I got a text message. The local geeks bringing more drinks. It, it, it's and crazy. I have drinks for you from JS. I mean, my fridge can't handle all of this. It's, yeah, my fridge can't either. I, it's full, and I have drinks on the floor over here. Like this, this is crazy, it, crazy talk my, at the Triple I, B. I, I, I mean, the Triple B is clearly rolling in the booze right now, which I mean, it's a good problem. But at the same time, like I have purchased stuff myself that I'm like, I want to give this stuff a try, <laughs> but I'm going to be drinking other people's beer for like three months uh anyway so to get this out i'd also like uh, to go to the fact that it doesn't pay the bills <laughs> that's <laughs> nice it's a nice problem to have however <laughs> help us subscribe streamlabs.com slash beer blues bs and just one dollar a month helps keep this show afloat howard go for it yeah this is from the big grove brewery out of iowa city iowa it is the Big Groove Squeeze Vodka Seltzer, the strawberry lemonade variety. Uh, made with real fruit and Iowa vodka. It is 6.4% alcohol by volume. 
Uh, it's a seltzer, so we know we're absolutely going to hate this. Um, it is fresh from the grove, made with real fruit, Iowa vodka, and sweetened with local honey. Uh, yep, made with Iowa wildflower honey. Squeeze righteously and follow us at Big Grove Brewery. Recycle for good karma, if you believe in that sort of thing. Made using real fruit, a small amount of sediment may be present. That's right, there could be dirt in here. That's a, that's a geology joke. What a dirty drink. I mean, it's a seltzer. I have yet to have a seltzer that I have enjoyed, so. I mean, it does smell like strawberry lemonade. Okay, that's not the worst seltzer I've had. That That's actually pretty decent. Um, huh? Ooh. Huh? Yeah, I. <sighs> the question is what to rate it, though. I mean, it's not bad. Would I drink this on another occasion? Probably not. But I don't mean that that's a bad thing. You know, like. It's kind of like if you offered me this and anything else, I probably would take the anything else. But this isn't terrible. Um, it does have a very strong kind of vodka aftertaste that I'm not a fan of. Uh, Kidder, I'm going to give this a 2.8. <clears throat> not too bad. Not too bad. It's, it's uh, you know, uh, as I said, if you're into the seltzers, this might be right up your alley. I just, I'm not a seltzer fan. And so I just, it's all right. I will drink this, but I'm hoping we get to what's on tap round two, because I got something I'm really excited about sitting right over here. But I got to get through this first, so. Cheers to you, good sir, and uh, may our glasses always be at least half full. <clears throat> yeah. Well, <clears throat> Kidder, I definitely have to say um, it has been a very sleep-deprived uh, week here in the Howard Blues household. Uh, if you recall from last week, uh, it was we recorded the night before uh, we took Junior in to have his tonsils removed. Uh, he he unfortunately inherited my very large tonsils, and knowing what I have put up with because of my tonsils, I like it. It was no question; the kid needed to have him removed. Uh, he did very well. Uh, <laughs> One thing I learned, and this is why I'm glad. I am glad that Lefty is a nurse. So glad because we were we we're sitting in pre-op, and we'd already talked to the anesthesiologist, and we we talked to a couple of the nurses. We were just waiting our turn, uh, and we hear a kid down the down the hall from us, just like all of a sudden start screaming and I don't know or. And I kind of looked at my wife and she said, oh, he just woke up. Oh. Wow. Well, <clears throat> let's admit this and we'll put a pause on this story. Yeah, because he's going to need to hear that. <clears throat> yes. Once he gets in here. This is good. Uh, I forgot that I didn't give a rating either. This is very good. Uh, I'm, I'm saying a four point six wow very good that, that's a very good rating and uh, hey you mentioned that somebody was knocking down the door that's right folks it's a jimmy john sandwich no it's not it's really Hopefully. js <laughs> gunslinger knocking down the tavern door which is okay because a number at least seven can, yeah uh, you can at least put the door back up so js how you doing tonight well, I'm going to borrow a line 
I'm going to borrow a line from somebody else and say it has been a. It's weird how the internet caught out there. Could you just repeat that for <laughs> posterity's sake? Just, just, oh, just for, to... for future Howard's week. Oh, sorry, for future Howard's sake. <laughs> this week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, if you're going to steal Howard's line to begin with, at, at least you made it your own, man. I, I'll give you that. Yeah, you put a right, nice little, right. little bow on it. Uh, I'll put I'm going I'm to put the sandwich down for a second. I have not eaten anything today other than my sandwich, so you're going to have to deal with me eating in a little bit, but I don't care. This is going to really become a mukbang podcast. Just, just watch, people. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, I got a Could cooler a full of beer ASMR? next to me. Yes, <laughs> I got a cooler full of beer next to me, a Jimmy John sandwich, a cold beer sitting next to me. <laughs> Hold on. And I got a new kilt. So, <laughs> yeah. <yes. laughs> I, I'd like to say I could see it, but uh, <clears throat> it's yeah, blending right. in with the background. That's right. <laughs> so... Yeah, uh, yeah. Like I said, it uh, week has not uh, has not went the best. Um, there has been a plethora of stupid people we've had to deal with at at the shop, and uh, people just can't figure out how to be nice, so they don't get to come back. Ooh, ooh. That's that's something when you get banned from a pet grooming place. <laughs> oh, you're damn right. That is two of them this week that have been banned. And Maybe one that's... more that's on the verge. <laughs> so, wow. I You know, I can understand getting like banned from a bar or, you know, like Walmart because people do stupid stuff in Walmart all the time, but and from a pet grooming place. That's okay. Wow. Yep. <laughs> you know, I uh, we we will we will put up with a with a lot when when it comes for the betterment of the critters that we get brought in. However, when you decide to be a <laughs> person, you don't get to come back. We are booked out solid until the middle to end of July. I have enough customers that are decent human beings that understand when things happen and are nice people that I don't need to put up with asshats. Yeah. Yeah. And a lady on Monday call and curse me out because she missed her appointment because she didn't get the reminder text. And that is the only way that she knows when her appointments are. That's kind of on her. Well, uh, our program has been having some issues. There has been some technical difficulties with that. They released a new version at the beginning of the week, and it has been a show ever since. Uh, I hope you got your beep button handy, because it, it's going to go like this for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so she cursed me out because... She didn't get a reminder, and it was my fault that she missed her appointment that she scheduled. And uh, when I told her that we have a cancellation fee and that it was half the price of the room, she, uh, she did pay it and then very angrily told me to cancel all of her appointments, which I gladly did. Uh, she was then blacklisted, and then today... One of them decided to get into it with my wife. That didn't go well. <laughs> once I uh, once I get some video footage, I'll send it over to Kidder, and you guys can you guys can see the mayhem. But uh, short story is uh, today was even more of a show than the majority of the week. One of our groomers stabbed herself in the leg with a scissors. <laughs> Yep. Yep. You thought gluing your fingers together was bad, Howie? I see you're holding a razor blade. Don't get any ideas. I I uh, mean, I have consumed, but listen, it, 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 
I know you didn't stay up and watch our uh, review of AEW Dynamite, but I was still also scraping mold lines off of models during that. And I consumed like six, seven shots of alcohol during the course of that. And I didn't stab myself with this. <laughs> so. Yeah, so to be fair, it was not her fault. She had a... <laughs> her name is not Jean Snitsky for the record. Yes, yes. So we'd just gotten a whole shipment of shears and clipper blades and whatnot that had come back from the sharpeners. So this thing was an absolute razor blade for the, for one. She had it in her apron, which is made, it's, it's a leather apron made for grooming with shear pockets on the front of it, specifically for this purpose. She had the scissors in there. She was working on a dog. Dog reached out and literally kicked the very top of her shears and when he hit it, it sent it through her apron, through her pants, and into her thigh. So, so I okay, I, I'm going to then make a correction to this story. She <laughs> did not stab herself with scissors. She was clearly assaulted by a canine. She, the, you, you, you are correct. Yes. So, <laughs> uh, the the uh, the canine has been charged with. Uh, no, oh, I can't come up with anything clever because my brain is broken right now, but assault with a deadly weapon. Barking up the wrong and tree. Yes, yes, yes. So Got a bone to pick. That's right. So that put everybody behind right away this morning because this was at 10 o'clock in the morning. So that put everybody behind right away. And then uh, from there, about three o'clock when we're supposed to close, um, we had a, an old, old, very overweight border collie lab thing. Not even sure what it was. Very nice dog, but very old and very, very, very overweight. Like this thing looks like a coffee table with legs. Um, and one of our groomers got him, got his first bath all done. And we were going to, her and I were going to, we're going to get him up onto the grooming table so she could finish blow drying him and uh, brush him out. And he wasn't having it. Um, I don't know if he wasn't feeling good today or just old and crotchety, but he wasn't having it. Started, started biting, which we're, we're used to that. Not a big deal. Didn't bite hard, but was just uh, telling us that he didn't want to do this. Okay. So. Back off a little bit, take a little bit different approach and, you know, try and do it as gentle as we can. But as soon as I got my arms underneath him to attempt to help pick him up, he uh, turned his, his lower unit into a pressure washer mm. and soaked everything except the ceiling, including myself and the floor and the other groomer and himself and so yeah so now dog needs second bath try and pick him up again same thing okay go get the wife <laughs> she's she's she can sometimes got a little bit better way of coaxing uh critters into places she tries same thing get him into the we do get him into the tub as I think by I think by now his bladder is empty, um, and uh, get him get him washed up, get him cleaned up, and start blow drying him in the tub because we don't want to move him again. Call the lady to tell her, hey, we're running a little bit behind, you know, Sparky or whatever dog's name is. I don't, I don't remember, but Sparky's Sparky's not having it today. Probably just going to be able to do the bath, and we'll get him dried out as much as we can. You know, we'll. All, all, all we'll charge is, is, is it'll be like it'll be just just the bath today in a in a week or two um we'll we'll find some time and and get you in and we'll brush them out and take care of what we were we were going to do uh and she instantly starts cursing out the wife and said well what did you guys do he did find this he did find last time you must have done something this is your fault and then uh it said, you're going to get my dog groomed. 
I don't care what it takes. You're going to do it. Nope. Nope. No, we're, no, we're not. Because we're not going to injure your pet just so we can give him a haircut to make you happy. I guess that's not going to happen. So, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, wow. I mean, I, I, I got a story for you, for you, JS, which will give you a little bit of time to just take a bite of your sandwich and then we'll, maybe we'll have to let you get to a beer. But, uh, my brother, man, I got to show this because, because, uh, uh, okay. okay, go ahead. Round two. Mm. I'm, I'm going straight into this because I want to. I have. A Thirsty Street Brewing Lemon Drop American Sour Ale made with Amarillo hops and lemon peel crafted to reduce gluten. It is made by the Thirsty Street <laughs> Brewing Company. From the government warning, uh, in Unit C of Billings, Montana, 5% alcohol, 22 IBUs, Let's see how this thing tastes. Wow. That is actually a sour, sour ale. That is really good. I like hearing that. I was going to ask if it was cold, and then I remembered that <clears throat> it was in my uh, fridge. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, this one is compliments of Kidder, compliments of whoever gave it to Kidder. Uh, I think it was just Kidder. The, the store did. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but anyway, see, uh, this see, is he's amazing. Out of my head earlier. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going a solid four because I, I like I like sour things. I like the lemon. This is this is good. <clears throat> All right, Howie. Sorry to cut you off. I just I had to get into it. I got to get into. I got to cut them off because I'm out. <laughs> you know my story. My story is like a minute and would have tied in with your dog story. <laughs> okay, tell it. I'm on pause. All, all, all <laughs> I was going to tell. Was this story? Oh. My brother's got an English mastiff. His name's Bo. And one time, my brother was in the kitchen cooking bacon, and Bo came and started begging for bacon. And my brother said no. Bo begged again. My brother's like no. Beg Bo begged a third time. My brother's like no, Bo, you're not getting any bacon. And Bo walked proceeded to walk into my brother's living room, hop on the couch where my brother's girlfriend was sitting at the time, lift his leg and peed on her out of protest. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. End of story. That's all I wanted to say. Now back to everybody's second <laughs> segment of the show. What's on tap round two? <laughs> like, oh. Howard's just there so pissy about this. Like, calm down. <laughs> well, it's just one of those. Like, it would have been like a 30 second story. <laughs> oh. And then, like, we have three or four things, which then future Howard, when he goes to edit, is like, how do I label these chapters? Because Howard's going to tell this 30 second story that pertains to. Anyway, it's been a week. We can, we, we can just re-record the, the, the round two drink, and you can just blot out the first part. Oh, no, now this is all content. It's how it goes. <laughs> anyway, kid, what, what are you having for round two? <laughs> it's the Naughty Goat. From Laughing Sun to German-style Bach. 6.8% alcohol by volume. Tastes of malt, molasses notes, caramel notes, and maybe a bit of naughtiness. I added that last part. Keep cold. It's from Laughing Sun Brewery right here in Bismarck, North Dakota. Here you go. Here's the other side of the can. Take a look at it. There you go. Get a full look at it by volume and everything there. And how naughty is that goat? <clears throat> yes. How's the sandwich? What would you rate that on one to five? 
Um, <clears throat> I don't remember which one this one is, but it's the number one. And uh, it's not bad. I got extra Jimmy Peppers because mm-hmm. nothing is spicy enough. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had better sandwiches, but this one's good. Let me do like three and a half. Fills a hole. All right. This doesn't make up for all the sadness. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> so there's nice uh, caramelly notes off the top of this. A little bit of the toasted scent there. and mm-hmm. hmm. It's bocky. Little little brown ale. Mm-hmm. Mm, there's the caramel. <clears throat> mm. That part's delicious. Mm. Three point um, eight one two three. Mm. Nice. Mm. Nice. <clears throat> uh, I am not quite ready uh, <clears throat> for round two. Uh, because this vodka seltzer is the, not the my favorite You're thing to drink. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks. I know you. I know you. You worked so hard to bring it to me all the way f- from the great state of Iowa. I did <clears throat> right there oh. in Des Moines, Iowa. I like how I make a joke and a reference and the kid that immediately like just like does it better. <laughs> <laughs> what? I uh if you I if you off. remember <laughs> and you want to go back to when we started that, it was you you like do the rough cut and then I come in and do the polish. <laughs> Cause I hate doing all the freaking work to put it together. <laughs> yeah. Um what I was going to say, though, uh, just in the spirit of round two, and I have a feeling there'll be a round three. Um, we'll, we'll 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 play everybody's favorite new game. Somebody pick a number between one and four. Three. Three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If yeah. You know. You know. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> it's everybody's favorite little game that we play here on the triple B. Well, okay. Not maybe everybody's. I sometimes hate it, but Hey, if you know, you know, <sighs> mm. that's good. Good stuff. Although following that, uh, mm, vodka seltzer is a little, ugh. but <clears throat> Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I should make the disclaimer because it'll be a bit. And I know local geek JS local geek finally figured out if you know, you know, he figured out the drinks. So congratulations, local geek. I have new drinks. So <laughs> the game starts again. <laughs> it's game's on. afoot. Yeah. I'll try and drop some hints this time, make it a little easier on you. <clears throat> so, why he figured them all out? Uh, he figured them all out with the help of a picture of mine where I hid the labels, but he could look at the bottles. So, oh, I helped him out a little bit, but he figured he figured out number three on his own. <clears throat> so, I uh, Kidder, I, I was telling you about. <clears throat> My week <laughs> uh, before Jay has got in. So as I was saying, uh, Junior was getting his tonsils out. We're in pre-op. Kid wakes up crying down the hall, and my wife goes, "Oh, you know." And I, I kind of looked at her and I'm like, "What?" And she's like, "Yeah." She goes, "Kid just woke up." I'm like, "How do you know the kid just woke up?" She goes, "Well, there's a particular uh, drug that they sometimes use. Uh, they actually use quite a bit with anesthesia." That apparently when the kid takes it, it causes them to wake up swinging. <laughs> Meaning, like, they're throwing haymakers. <laughs> so she's like, yeah, we should talk to the anesthesiologist. There's something else that we can give Junior. So 
she did. She talked to the anesthesiologist to uh, eliminate that. Um, but he made it through the surgery just fine. Um, it's been a rough week. We've had to wake him up every three to four hours so he can take meds. And uh, just the pain of that and then just the overtiredness of being woken up, it's been it's been rough. I've averaged maybe four to five hours of sleep a night all week, except for last night when my wife so kindly uh, in, in trying to help him uh, took and slept down in my recliner with him. So <laughs> I got the bed to our, myself as like the most sleep I've gotten all week. Uh, but I am still groggy. It is, it has been tiring. Uh, they just put him on a little bit stronger uh, steroid to help with the healing process. So we're hoping that kicks in. Um, so he's doing great, but he's, he's been miserable. He, uh, he doesn't like the fact that he can only eat soft foods. Uh, he doesn't like the taste because when you have the scab in the back of your throat, it just makes everything taste bad and his breath is terrible. So like we've been trying to push fluids, but he doesn't want to drink because it tastes terrible. It's been, it's been rough, but uh, he's on the mend and, you know, I just want to get him past the pain thing, but I, it has made for a very tiring uh, week. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's, that's what I've been going through. Been interesting. <clears throat> so. I know I've talked about it. I still have my tonsils. Either of you guys ever had to have your tonsils removed when you were a kid or negatory ghost rider. The yeah. only thing I'm missing is part of a foot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I mean, I'm missing an appendix, but that's. Nope. Still that there too. <clears throat> uh, Kidder is giving us the international signal that. I, I couldn't quite tell if that was a happy face or an angry face. So either the Avs scored. Angry. Angry. Oh, the, the Jets scored. Okay. Again. <clears throat> well, boo. Man. So now they're up two to one. Man, I thought we would have just blown past the Jets. I had high hopes. We didn't win any of the three games against them during the regular season. So this is going to be rough then. Well, let's let's hope things get better. Mm. So, yeah, no, I had a my appendix taken out fourth grade. Like I missed the whole month of November from school for that one. That was fun. Started off was what we thought was the flu, and then ended up going into the ER because I was so dehydrated, couldn't keep anything down, and found out my appendix had ruptured twelve to twenty four hours beforehand. And uh, yeah. I was uh, on the verge of (laughs) all sorts of terrible stuff. Uh, Luckily got in. They were able to remove it and and recovery, but that's the only, yeah. Piece I think I'm missing is appendix. (laughs) So I'll take that as a win. Uh, Kidder, you mentioned uh, in the Mm pre-show that you had some sad news to share. So, yes, as I can't think of anything else to talk about right now, the floor is yours, sir. What is this sad news? It's very sad. And I'd also like to blame JS for telling me, but the Fargo Brewing Company has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection to reorganize its liabilities for a sustainable and successful future. Since coming out of the pandemic into the new tap room in 2021, Fargo Brewing Company has not met its business pro- projections while feeling the weight of significant debt in an ever changing industry. They have worked to avoid, and uh, Fargo Brewing Company is committed to working through the difficult time to continue to operate within the community, state, and region they love. They began brewing in 2010. And since then, they say the industry has experienced many challenges, including COVID supply chain issues and different uh, in 
differences in consumer drinking habits. From a consumer standpoint, Fargo Brewing says nothing should change. They will continue to produce and distribute beer. The tap room will remain open for normal business hours. And upcoming events in the tap room and the hall will continue as planned. That is some sad news. I always thought that they were doing really pretty well. So, Me but. too, especially going there for the on-location <laughs> I did. Yeah, I guess I just hadn't heard uh, that they were doing poorly. Uh, so I wonder what they mean, though, by changes in like consumer habits. Like, Probably the shift of, uh, from IPA to <laughs> amber <laughs> ales <laughs> to sours. I guess they're just going to have to change up some brewing habits and make things taste like this. I, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily that. I'm just wondering if, like, it's maybe like people were like eh, buying singles instead of like buying growlers or, you know, some of yeah. that. <clears throat> yeah. Well, you know, economy wise, it's not, it's not like things are going great right now. So, you know, people uh, are cutting back a little bit here and there on extracurricular activities, including drinking, kind of. You know, I, I, I mean, I think that there, there's, yes, there's probably some of that. Um, oh, gosh, who was I? Uh Somebody, I was watching their YouTube. They were at uh, the Toronto Blue Jays baseball game. And they, they they were at one spot looking at getting a hot dog. Gentlemen, let's play a little guessing game. Price is right rules. Closest but not going over. What was the price of a single hot dog at the Toronto Blue Jays baseball game? Was it is in this Canada Can or was it somewhere else? This is in Canada. Ooh. <clears throat> $13. Okay, JS. I'm going to go with 17 Kanaki Stan pesos. Well, uh, JS is closest. <laughs> How? <laughs> Kanaki Stan pesos. Jesus. <laughs> well, let's just take over Canada and get it over with. That's right. Uh, the uh, the correct answer to that was thirty two dollars. So really, it was Rough. like five bucks in U.S. Uh, I I mean I didn't do the conversion, but uh, thirty two dollars. Yes. For is it a foot long? Piglets and assholes. Yeah, a a foot long hot dog. So how would they call it a foot long? I mean, it'd have to be a meter long because they don't have feet in Canada. Right, listen, I, I don't think that when people uh, look at that, that they make that conversion. <laughs> why, why did they almost break you with a, a metric versus imperial standard joke? <laughs> why? Because it's the idea of like measuring hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> metric. You need, it's, it's not our fault that they're doing it wrong. I, they just want to be us. That's why they call it a foot long. If they if they didn't want to be us, they wouldn't. They would call it a meter long. Yeah, you, well, you, get, you get a three foot long hot dog, and you're that's like, right. uh, <laughs> <laughs> imagine that, walking that. around that. Yeah, but like it was that. I think it was like eighteen bucks for a beer. It was incredible the the prices on that. It is Canada. So, I mean, speaking of that. overpriced beer, I was at a roadhouse that happens to be in the shape of a state a couple days ago, and uh, I sent Kidder a picture of the beer that I was drinking. It was a single twelve ounce can that had uh, that uh, was made by a local brewery. With a, uh, it, it was a, 
<laughs> Bison ale, something like that. It was a, it was an NDSU. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we, okay. We've had that on the show. I think. <laughs> yeah. It was quite good. Uh, take a guess how much probably that tasted was. like, uh, $8. Not quite. Kidder. I think I, I might've told you, but you didn't, didn't tell me, but I'd imagine for that specialty brew and a 12 ounce variety that tastes like <laughs> probably $6 and 90 cents. Uh, negative. How he got the win on this one. It was $10 for a single can of beer. <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> And You'd pay anything Tyler, that, uh, that price for NDSU related things. You know, I didn't even ask because I figured it was a five or six dollar beer. I'm okay with that for a good beer if I'm gonna have one. So I another guy drinking it, and I'm like, hey, well, I'll have one of those. Yep, should have asked. Got the bill, ten bucks. I'm like, hmm. really? <laughs> and it wasn't even, you know, it wasn't even a pounder. It it wasn't alcoholic chocolate milk, like it. Twelve fluid ounces. It was twelve fluid ounces of, yeah, of shit. <laughs> I would, like I said, I I actually was a fan of it. I I did like the beer. Um, I I did. I wanted another one, but not for that price. Yeah, beerflation. It's a real thing. <clears throat> yeah. What's funny is I don't is, know if it's if it's just restaurant price, being it's a specialty beer, or if that's what I think it was Blackleg was the name of the brewing company that did it. Uh yeah, I I'm I'm really not sure, but I, mean, I think it would be both because obviously the restaurant's gonna mark it up like sixty percent. Maybe not that much, but a lot and retail price is going to be higher than what you would get it at the place, which is still making a profit on it, etc. But the six packs that I picked up uh, of each of those other brews that uh, Howard has local geek has that you have were $12 a piece. So, you're at two dollars retail per beer, which, and some of them were actually were fourteen. Now that I think about it, so they were even higher than two dollars per beer. So it's getting up there to almost being ridiculous. But ten dollars for a can is also just egregious. I, you know, like I said, I, I expect five to six dollars for a good craft beer, especially if it's a local brewery. I'm okay with that for one, you know, to have one or two at a restaurant, whatever. If it's 10 bucks, it better be a freaking pint or better. <laughs> I probably would have just got the, <clears throat> the, uh, tall, whatever they call them there. The the giant mug. Yeah, they, they only had this stuff in cans, I think. Oh, I know. But whatever I can get in a mug, I probably would have got that and saved the five dollars. Had had I known it was ten dollars a can, I, I would have absolutely gotten something different. <laughs> like yeah. An old fashioned, maybe, or you know anything else. I guess they do have an old fashioned there, don't they? I think so. I didn't actually get to ask, but I think I saw a picture of it last time and I knew that it was screwed up because it had a cherry. Just and giggles when the, when the, cause I, I went, I went to the bar and, and ordered one. But when the waiter came, I, I just asked him, I'm like, Hey, just, I saw you have the, these NDSU beers. I mean, how much are they? He never did answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> Cause if you have to ask, have to you, ask can't you can't afford it. That's right. <clears throat> I'd also like to mention I recently visited that restaurant. I ordered a nice 16 ounce sirloin, nice pound of meat, 
medium rare. How did it show up? About the color of the wood behind JS. I knew Ooh. immediately that there was something wrong with it. <clears throat> it looked beautiful, nice and you know, burnt in the right right spots. However, they murdered that piece of meat and they should be arrested. Yes, I had to send it back because I cut it open and even with the juices that were left on the exterior, it was not enough to actually go into it to make it go back in time and revive itself. That's that's surprising because usually they don't overcook steaks. Usually they're I very, have... very much undercooked, but you know. Oh. Uh, there I have had probably two thirds of my steaks overcooked. Huh. I've only and, been there twice to this one. So I, we, uh, I have been there twice in like a month. So yeah, it's, we, uh, it's the thing. If we go to a steakhouse. We go to the one with horns because you know, they have good steaks. see, I like their steaks too. And we've been there like twice in a month and both of them were overcooked there too. I have yet to have a bad meal from from the place with horns in all of the times that we have went there. Every single one has been awesome. So maybe they just don't like you. Uh, Remember that customer service story I was talking about? <laughs> it's possible. Uh, I say please and thank you. I, I say hello. I say nice things. I, I try to be, you know, a decent person. And I try to emphasize the medium rare as I'm ordering so that I don't get a medium well steak. Maybe if I order just medium, then it'd be straight in the middle, but then I'd get a well done steak. So why don't you just order it mooing? Because then it would actually be mooing. And then, <laughs> then I'd be like, can you throw this on a little bit? Yeah, sure. We'll, we'll add a little extra for you. <clears throat> yeah. The wife and I actually had a, uh, because uh, Little Miss went out to the ranch because she was too energetic for Junior with his, you know his recovery. Um, we ordered ourselves some. I'm going to say because I don't follow the same rules as these guys. We ordered from uh, Longhorn Steakhouse. I gotta say, whoa, put my finger away. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I I have to say my steak was overcooked and kind of over seasoned. It was it was okay. Hmm. Well, okay. Which steak did you get? Uh, ribeye. Ah, see, I go to I go to Longhorn specifically to get the flat iron. They're one of the few places that will actually that actually sell a flat iron. That's that is that delicious. is one of my that is one of my favorite steaks. Um, there's a, there's a butcher shop that that's got a number and a letter in a name and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> listen, if you're going to be honest with yourself, maybe you should think about all three of those letters. That's right. Huh? I <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Here's the thing. After I said Longhorn, the Jazz is like, good. Howard is taking that bullet. I can now say it. He's gotten the blame. But I'm going to get to the butcher shop. I'm not going to say that one. I'm going to wait for somebody else to say it so that yeah. I get it. I'm not the one in trouble. There's mm -hmm. also another right. restaurant in town that's a little, a little bit more pricey, but absolutely delicious with it. It also has a number. Like, you know, the northern part of a field that you would talk about, about a certain number of acres that you have, the, like like forty <laughs> some acres. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad that you know you're you you have farming background. You've been on the sticks before, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, like the north forty. <laughs> <laughs> that restaurant <laughs> also has a great hanger steak. 
that they season fantastically. They dry age it. It's just delicious. <laughs> we, the, I took the wife there for our anniversary last year, and we had a good time. It was a very good meal. They make a very good old fashioned. If you mm, tell them to make it right. <clears throat> well, the one I had was good. Yeah, I'm sure it had some of that nasty red crap in it. Uh, I do not believe mine had a cherry in it, but I, hmm. I don't, I don't remember. Um, hmm. I had the, I had the waitress spice it up a little bit and add some, some better whiskey in there. Yeah, I don't that, remember what that she also put in. helps. Last it time was, I was, was there, it was our anniversary dinner, so we, we kind of splurged and. Had so you let her have a stuff. Pepsi. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> None of that coke crap for us. We're going Pepsi. <laughs> Well, well, uh, that is from the movie Waiting, where they're at shenanigans. Yep. Yep. And Ryan Reynolds comes over and, and asks what they would like to drink. And he goes, I'll have this and this and a shot of this. And she'll have a water. Oh, hell, it's our anniversary. She'll have a Pepsi. Great movie. Great Love movie. It. Love it. Oh, yeah. But no, I had we, to help had the... Really- had to help the server with my old fashioned there and the visit prior to that I had, <laughs> uh, I got into a disagreement with the server about how an old fashioned is made, including pulling it up on the internet on a Google search. I can say that cause we pay Google for this platform. So uh, on a search and all of them all the recipes had just that they were muddling an orange which you don't do put a cherry and cherry juice in there like I don't want that crap get out of here anyway I think uh, I think Rachel needs to needs to make a official <laughs> how to make a old fashioned and uh, we should put that out there. You know, I think next time we go there, we should ask whether she's working or Mike's working. We should we should ask, hey, can we record you making an old fashioned with the proper way? Put it out there. That might be worth think, it. Howard? I mean, yeah, I'd go for it. You know, but they're willing to do it. Worst they can say is no. I mean, we we, you know, constantly plug Thomas and Moriarty's on here. So, even though I have yet to be there, you you son of a, you have not been there. I have not been there. I have kids. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. See, he uses as do I. Like I've I have there. kids, <laughs> and I have to go to sleep at night, and I'm like, but see, whiskey Wednesday. <laughs> See, I, listen, I have never actually been officially invited to Whiskey Wednesday. Oh, also, also keep that in mind, Mr. Kidder. I've never been invited. You can, you can show up to every Whiskey Wednesday with or without me. <clears throat> well, where's there, the I fun in that? You. I invited hey, you to the end of eternity. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the problem is, is you're, you're putting too much emphasis on sleep. If you just don't sleep, you can do more things. Uh, no, no, I can't. <laughs> I I need my sleep. I I don't function well without it. Tend to get really nasty migraines if I don't get enough sleep. So ah, yeah. So, so yeah. As much as I'd like to just say, yeah, I could just sleep later. It's like no, if I don't get enough, then. I spend the next day just miserable. All work and no sleep, think how we a dull boy. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty <laughs> much. Not that anybody would say Howard is an exciting character I, normally, you know. That's how it goes. I mean, you are the living embodiment of Charlie Brown, so Yeah, I mean, if something bad's gonna happen, it's gonna happen to me. I, I guarantee it. JS, how many episodes did you make it through? Uh, 10? 
ish. It's pretty good. There's quite a few. It's, it's, it's pretty good. Pretty, pretty I mean, good. Our episodes, for the record. Yes, I, I watched a whole bunch of things. I mean, we drove for forty nine hours, so you know. If I could get my phone to cooperate a little bit more, uh, I would have watched more episodes, but it would play for a good hour, maybe two, and then it would just stop. I mean, listen, this show does tend to go downhill when you get to the second hour. So. <laughs> <laughs> the staff is usually the better half. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I suppose it would maybe doing me a favor. Yeah. Yeah, because usually it's in the that second hour where we do things like everybody's third favorite segment of what's on tap, you know. It has clearly gone downhill at that point. Yeah. You know, and if we were... I haven't cracked we, my third, so I don't know. <clears throat> see, when we go to those things, we usually leave on either a Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. So it'd be... I mean, if we did a, if we did a show on, like, Tuesday night... We could have the live stream of me driving across the country. <laughs> well, Rude boy Kyle and I already do that in American Truck Simulator, <laughs> and it's boring as hell then. We don't need the real thing taking even yes. longer. Yes, but I yell shit at people while we're driving. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the most interesting cross stream. <laughs> You know, we have the technology. We can just live stream it anyway. I, I mean, you could. I, I mean, we could do that. I can't promise I'll hop online and make snarky comments, you know. That's... God. Well, you'd have like 30 hours to do it. So it's not yeah. saying that having kids would prevent you from doing it once. Then I mean, show, having kids has never stopped me from making snarky comments. <laughs> Let's be the honest. next show we're driving to is in Houston, Texas in June or July, one or the other. I'll have your opportunity. Yeah. Well, talk to the streaming guy. That that That's Kidder's department. This is getting sou- more sour by the, uh, the further I go, and I love it. <laughs> Here, I thought you were going to say this is getting more sour the more we're talking. <laughs> I mean, that too, you know. But. Well, don't you dare be sour. Clap for your world famous zero time champs and feel the alcohol. Although, I don't know how having this lemon sour is going to affect the next beer, but. I think well, Peter gave me something that would clean the palate. I was going to say, there's nothing that cleans the palate better than a shot of whiskey. All right. Still working on getting that catchphrase over. <clears throat> now, I do have to do things tomorrow, so. I can't drink all of this cooler. <laughs> That's it's probably a good call. Good call. I have to build a deck tomorrow morning. Oh. Or finish building a deck. <sighs> building a deck. Oh, it's interesting. So I guess we're getting to everybody's third favorite segment of the show, and that is What's on Tap? Round three. Drink. Had to so, get that we're going to go with our little mini uh, <clears throat> mini mason jar, at least a little bit of it. I don't know if I can drink that whole thing all in one, because that's a hell of a shot. But uh, after that... Oh. Which one are you looking at? He's He's got the uh, the mini jar, mason jar shot oh, from the local that geek. That one has to wait for, uh, for local geek. Okay. Because <clears throat> I don't oh, know man. what it is. You know what it and is, I and I don't. That one I know what it is. the The first one I don't know what it is, and if we drink it without local geek, then we won't know, and we might die. 
Yeah, it's his revenge on the whole if you know, you know. He gave us a mystery shot. Oh. That one I do know what it is, and you don't have to take it as a shot. Obviously, you can definitely sip it or <clears throat> I ain't drinking that as a shot because that I'm pretty sure it's gasoline and that will kill me. So <laughs> I can make it through the whole thing. I just have to sip it. Uh, I mean, it's but more after like that, kerosene. But yeah, <laughs> I uh, being I had the lemon, I think I'm gonna go with the hazy blues juicy IPA because the other cold one is the coffee stout double shot, and I don't think I want to take a double shot coffee stout after a lemon I do not think that will be good however I also have ooh <laughs> he's got the whole pack in his <clears throat> that's got great the whole pack in his hands he's got the whole six pack in his hands he's got the Sing whole it out. pack Sing it out. in his hands which God, one will he drink pack. tonight? Oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll be here all week, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I got kids. I'm not going anywhere else. <laughs> all right. So we're going to do the mystery baby food beach nut organic prune shot. <laughs> I know what that one is. Know, Howard. <laughs> oh, you do. You do remember. Okay. Oh, I, I do remember what that is. <laughs> Calls. <laughs> yep, it's gasoline. All right, uh, something like that. <laughs> Did you smell it? Yeah, I can already tell pretty much what this is. What does it smell like? Uh, it smells like the same thing you put in race cars to make them go two hundred miles an hour. <laughs> I mean, it might make you go two hundred miles an hour in some direction. <laughs> Smell you mother gave me straight Everclear. No, nope, or nope, Bacardi one fifty, nope. or Bacardi one fifty one. No, nope, this was nope. legally purchased at a store not in North Dakota. I mean, you can buy Everclear. I mean, yeah, but still purchased not here. <laughs> Gin. <laughs> what the. F is that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Now, in fairness, the other flavors of the things that you've had may be. Yep, that's the face right there. That's the face. Yep. What there it is. The f is that? <laughs> the other flavors might be screwing with them here. Oh. <laughs> of what he previously drank. Do you uh do you smell it or taste it aside from the like acetylene? <laughs> that's in there? I smell something, but I don't know what the hell it is. It's a nacho night <laughs> there, uh, JS. Payback's gonna be a <laughs> just no, just no. keep that in mind. You already <laughs> you already did it. You already paid me back with your freaking four loco. So suck on that. Uh, There's the face. Damn it. What the <laughs> is that? Holy. <laughs> that's enough of that crap. So. <laughs> God, I'm, glad, damn. I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one that almost oh. died drinking that. Um, is, is that gin? No. No. What the f is that? There, there's just zero <laughs> gin in it. Zero. <laughs> no gin. Um, <clears throat> so, oh. do you want me to leave it as a mystery and then uh, Howard's going to put it on the screen? Or do you want to smell it tomorrow morning and then text me your thoughts? I, I kind of want to just open up the back door and put it out of its misery, but... No, you're going to kill the grass. <laughs> You'll never have anything grow there ever again. <laughs> oh. Like that... <coughs> um. <laughs> it tastes like pine nuts. The biggest thing with it is the the initial aroma. That's I, the biggest... I, 
the aroma that I'm getting is like a musty, like <laughs> damp basement hell <laughs> that I get from that. And I, I I don't know what kind of alcohol <laughs> smells like damp musty basement. Mm, that one. But that's all I can yeah. smell. Yeah. Granted, it could be because I'm sitting in a damp, musty basement, but. <clears throat> hmm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was man, horrid. I, I am glad that <clears throat> I was not the only one that felt the same that way. Oh. Yeah, although, I, although I, I, I think I do know what it is blue long drink. Nope. <laughs> Definitely nope. not on that one. Yeah. Oh, that is way better. I mean, I'd hope so. I don't know. My smell must be broken from getting peed on or something. I don't know because I can't smell this very good, very good either. But anyway, this is a. Fat Fish Brewing Company Huckleberry Hybrid. It is 4.9 ABVs, 12 fluid ounces, a Surgeon General's warning, and it is from uh, Dickinson, North Dakota. I'll open that one too. As you can see, mine's been through it a little bit. Um, and I think this was one of them that froze in my fridge out. West. So it's 4.9 oh, ABV. I would describe this one. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's a mellow beer with, it doesn't fit. In <laughs> it doesn't fit in there. It's it's hard, it's hard to say. I don't know. It's like it's a it's a mellow beer. Pro move here, Howard. That has a obviously it's got the huckle. You can taste the huckleberry <laughs> in it, but it's I don't know, almost like a Belgian white with. With a lot of huckleberry in it, it's not a sour, but I don't know. It's it's middle of the road. It's not. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's not my favorite beer in the world, but sure tastes a hell of a lot better than that <laughs> baby food you fed me. <laughs> Other details are it's from Fatfish Brewing. In Dickinson, North Dakota, there on West Villard. They were established in 2018. 4.9% alcohol by volume. And it has a bear. A bear. And berries. And Howard was the one who told me that these were available <clears throat> in the old Dickey town. So I went and yep. found them and spent like 80 bucks. On beer. Yep. Oh, Howie, I uh, I was saying earlier, I dropped a care package off with Kidder. I, and I, I, I heard. I, I, I heard. think you'll be surprised or pleasantly surprised at some of the selections I found. Well, I mean, that's. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> there's a there. There's that one meant specifically. There's one meant specifically to to torture Kidder. But you know, All right. Kidder, what's your thoughts on the Huckleberry beer? Very huckley <clears throat> and berry. Mm. Yeah, you, you, like the... that, you get are you getting that kind of like that Belgian white style kind of taste with a kind of fruit. It's it's almost like the <clears throat> malt liquor is the conveyor of the, the fruit. Yep. Here's some liquid with a lot of berry. And I'm not complaining about it. Um, I think I I liked this one better. Starting it off with the blackberry. 
but the huckleberry has a little extra bittery berry taste than a blackberry. So it's kind of along the same lines. For rating for this one, <clears throat> I mean, it is local, so that's good. But it almost, and I don't know if it's because it froze or if it's because it's how it's supposed to taste. But it's almost like a watery berry with alcohol. Yeah. So Yeah, I'd go with that. 3.2. Yeah. Above average. I was, I was thinking like three flat. I, I didn't think I was going to go over three on this one. <laughs> it is definitely not the summer shandy. Yeah, yeah. Although it's not 100 degrees outside either, so. Well, well gents, it, <laughs> only from my drink your paint water koozie, uh, my drink uh, for this round, it is from the uh, where's the brewery on here? Uh, Dad's Root Beer uh, Factory? No, no. Uh, this is I, I'm not seeing the exact brewery. Uh, this is the a from Woodchuck Hard Cider. It is their Mimosa Cider and OJ. Give it a little shake and enjoy. It is gluten free. Made in Vermont. Five point five percent alcohol by volume. Uh, it's notes of sparkling wine and orange juice, inspired by your favorite brunch drink. Give it a slight shake and enjoy. I, I didn't realize Kidder was such a fan of brunch. <laughs> I'm just waiting for you to host. shake it so then it can explode all over you. It uh, says shake it, so you better shake that thing. Uh, it's uh, I, I had while I was waiting for you guys to talk about your beer. Uh, it is hard cider, orange juice from concentrate, less than 1% natural flavor, citric acid, and sulfites. Slightly carbonated, no artificial ingredients, can. By Vermont Cider Co. Middlebury, Vermont. So, yeah, that's uh, that's what we got here. A little hard cider. It also has a on it. Ah, on. Yeah. Fermentation for fun. Yeah. Did you shake it adequately? I did. You're just mad like that it did explode. Light. Anyway, just a little shake. Got a nice orange juice smell. <clears throat> That's okay. Very orange juicy. Holy crap. They just took out Devon Taves. He's gushing blood all over. Oh my gosh. It's got a bit of an aftertaste I'm not a fan of. <clears throat> Holy crap. Stick straight to the face like this. I was going to say, did someone take off a skate and stab him? Ugh, they showed a close up, but it was. Man, I mean, there's a puddle of... of blood like this on the ice. It's kind of orange like juice with like a cider taste. Look at this orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you know, I I wait patiently to, you know, let you guys talk about your beers and all of that, and I finally get a chance <laughs> to talk about mine. <laughs> Sorry, oh, there's a lot being in right here. There's a lot to I, unpack. I, He's I, even so... going to the back. He can't even just go to the bench. Yeah. I mean, this here being nice, and Kidder and I are just like, no, well, that's all right. Slowest beer drinker in the West. I'd give this like a 2.8. Ooh. It's, it's okay. It's just like way too much on the cider taste. It's like an orange cider. And I just don't know that I enjoy that. Oh. Which. Speaking of things that people slightly enjoy. Sleep. Uh, no, gentlemen, it's time for everybody's new favorite segment of the show. Yay! It's the dad jokes of the week. <sighs> mm. 
So here we go. Four dad jokes from this book. Uh, starting off, what did George Washington say to his men before they crossed the Delaware? Get in the boat. <laughs> like, I get the boat, or you get in the boat, or get in the boat. What? What's what? What is this all about? Hmm. I just watched a documentary about beavers. It was the best damn show I ever saw. <clears throat> What's what is the difference between ignorance and apathy? I don't know and I don't care. Nice. And uh, finally, your last dad joke of the week. What is the worst combination of two sicknesses? Diarrhea and Alzheimer's. You're running, but you don't know where. <laughs> I thought yeah. you'd just be a little disturbed because you'd be down with the sickness. Anyway, that's your dad jokes of the week. Glad that we could work that in. You're welcome. <clears throat> so does that make the score two to two, Kidder? It is two two in Colorado, currently on a four minute double minor because of the blood. Mm. Well, I just checked my UPS tracking and uh, my things the government doesn't want me to own should be here Wednesday. Mm. Is that your pallet of Tenorite? <laughs> no, that's that's upstairs already. <laughs> oh, pallet. <laughs> ah. Yeah. I was asked the question of... Uh, how can one buy a pallet of Tannerite, North Dakota? And I'm like, I don't know. You go to the store to get it. I, I don't know. You, I ask. mean, technic technically, you did go to Shields or Runnings or any of those other places, and you know, buy whatever they have in stock. And there's no limit, no limit. on how much you can buy of the stuff. Hmm. That's so, good to know. Yeah. I, I don't have a use for Tannerite. You have a use for Tannerite. <laughs> and the ability. I, and the I make good I make good use of Tannerite. Uh, we, we have a lot of fun with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah! Yeah! There ain't a Chushkin! I didn't realize Kier was such a big fan of Tenorite. Yeah. It's, okay. an explosive it's explosive. Like. <sighs> Woo! <clears throat> they were having a good day. The Very apps are winning. Sick. Very explosive. <clears throat> Very. Yeah. What's the score now, Kidder? It is three to two avalanche. <clears throat> ah, so How much as long as they, they get? <laughs> as long as they don't f up, they might be yeah. able to clench. 15 21 remaining in the third. The series oh, is up. 1 1. I mean, we still, are the Avs still on a power play? Yes. Well, no. It's not listed. <laughs> I think the first two minutes expired. Ah. So. I'll say if it was a double minor, they should have a few more minutes going, but maybe not. Sorry to say, I mean, you drank the stuff in that uh, baby food jar. Your whole sense of time might be messed up. You are not wrong. I don't know what that paint thinner combination in there was, but it's you want to smell it again? Not really. 
<laughs> just no. no, not drink it. I said smell it. Just smell it. No. Try it again. I, I I smell damp, musty basement every time I smell that. Like I can smell huckleberry in this, no problem. Hmm. This baby food. Oh my god, it's just f***ing horrible. I mean, I didn't say it was good. I'm just saying that's oh. supposed to be your ticket to figuring god, out what it is. That was like hand sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> I I have smelled some bad hand sanitizer. Yes. Oh, like it. Fuck, it does. Like I, I mean, I'm putting it on my hand as sanitizer right now. I mean, you should be good oh. for the next five years. That, that, oh no! That he's trying to just, figure out the color of it. So is it supposed to have floaties in it? Because mine's got floaties. It's probably the baby food. <laughs> It's extra like, protein. Actually, no, I I think it there's might a shit lo- load of stuff that is floating around I think in it's there. It's supposed to. Because it's the pieces of what it's supposed to be. Okay, gold slaughter does not taste like that. Can you see the floaties? See, there's a floaty, and it just dripped on my screen. <laughs> you well, know, it's it's probably so a for good. That. I was going to say, it's probably a good thing that JS does not have access to the drink spreadsheet, or he could get really cheesy and figure out what this might be. Yep, yep. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, like I said, the only thing I can come up with is that it's some type of gin, but I know you've said it isn't, but it tastes like gin and Everclear mixed together. It's freaking terrible. So I do have to mention that Rude Boy and the Misses are back in the bathroom at the hospital because uh, tornado warning number three is oh. going through right now. <laughs> Coming back for him, huh? Yes, yes. Has there been much damage with, with any of them yet? Do you know? <clears throat> well, uh, they don't know about, you know, at, at home. Uh, but yeah, I didn't been... mean necessarily their place, but... Yeah, there's been a lot of damage uh, across Nebraska and Iowa today from tornadoes. Oh, Ooh, that's not good. Oh. <clears throat> so no guesses. No guesses on what this turpentine that you're making me drink is? Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's gin mixed with Everclear, but no, I don't know. I, I do not know what this is. I have never drank anything that terrible. Aside from, yeah! <laughs> ah, yeah! I I didn't realize that Kidder was such a big fan of gin and Everclear. Yeah. Way uh, to go, Arturi Lekkinen. About the only thing I've had that's been this bad has been some really old, like. My wife and I call it cat piss wine because it was some wine she snuck from her parents when we were like 17, 18, somewhere in there and uh, tried to have a little bit of a date night and it just tasted like cat piss. So (laughs) it is not. And I will say that I brought it up north from down south. Do you... (laughs) I, you know, you had your sandwich already. Do you have any chips to go with your sandwich? No. Oh, you mother <laughs> What? What kind of <laughs> old vodka is this? I, I had nothing to do with this. I just know what it is. Is it well, straight up Kharkov or is it? Uh... Nope. Nope. Uh, there, there have been hints dropped. You just haven't picked up on them. Like, my cousin owns a vodka distillery, and his stuff does not taste like this. Well, I mean, nothing else should taste like this, unless it is, like, gasoline, Everclear, or poorly made product. This one is supposed to be a specific flavor of alcohol, as in not, like, a flavor of alcohol, but flavor mixed with alcohol yeah this this isn't the dill pickle or the no no no. no. like 
like I said, he makes dill pickle vodka. That tastes like a dill pickle. Right. Uh, now, he also makes rhubarb vodka. He makes uh, a handful of different ones. And they actually taste good. Right. This one, I agree, does not taste good because I have tasted it. My problem with it <clears throat> is that if it wanted to be what it's supposed to be, then it shouldn't be so crappy. So if your nose wasn't um, broken, plugged, <laughs> you would really get that. And that's what you would get off the scent. Like I open what you have sniffed it went, Oh, okay. Maybe this won't be so bad. Whoa. And yeah. No, it, uh, you can go back in the videos and you can watch it. <clears throat> like I get I get pine nuts. No, I get. But very surprising that you're getting gin and pine out of it. It has to be because of the yeah. other drinks. The the lemon might have messed with it, but yeah, I I honestly it honestly tastes like gin to me like the i did not i do not taste vodka in this at all it tastes like gin because it's like it's that smell i'm getting and the taste that i get is straight pine nuts well it's not (laughs) i'm assuring you (laughs) i can attest that it is actually not because we have proof of the bottle being on this show Oh, holy balls! Do I need a nap? We're almost there. It's almost the end. <laughs> I, I was just—I was just about to say, Kidder, on on this perplexing mystery. We've been talking for quite a while. It's time we start to wrap this show up. And to do that, here are some shameless plugs, as brought to you by the man, the myth, the legend. The Mark Kidder. I'm not paying for this. No, but you're the one bringing us the, you know, the plugs. Oh, all right. Uh, are we not telling him? I mean, let, let's. I, you know, it, there's always the final thought. You know, we 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 have the chance. You know, okay. <clears throat> give him give him one more time to get it. You know, before the show is in the bag. <clears throat> okay. I'm not taking that thing out of the cooler again, so. You can, I mean, you can sit and like smell it like a, a nice cup of hot hand, cocoa. It, yeah, it smells like hand sanitizer because it's, there's still a ring of it on the, <laughs> on the coffee table that it's I'm sitting at. It's going to stain your table. You better wipe that up. It blends into the paint that's on there, so, you know. Oh, maybe it mixes with the paint. Yeah. It's mm. going to thin it. At least it's All not right. leaving a residue on your fingers. Yeah, that'd be... <clears throat> that'd be rough. I mean, aren't you going to be mad that the abs have a two-man advantage for 21 seconds with 9 minutes, 26 seconds left? Why would I be mad about that? <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. no orange in that at all. Whoever decided that was orange is was drinking way too much of this cool of of this this this. <laughs> I mean, it could be cool as well. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Out on the I, uh, you know, Howard. I hear out on the ranch that they have a lot of things to do, like. Use the skid steer and mini excavator and eat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> JS is like, what are you saying? And S E F U. I I I know where you're going, but I don't know what the name of this shit is. Besides, it tastes like dog water. Where Where are we going with it? I think we're going all the way to beerbluesandbs.com. 
Whoa, Howard! Throwing the Triple B website out. BeerBluesBS.com. Bam! That's your home for the Triple B in cyberspace. Also, we are on Streamlabs.com slash BeerBluesBS. Streamlabs.com slash BeerBluesBS. That is where you can buy some of our merch and you can support the show and guess what when we're doing the live versions it's right across the bottom of your screen if you're watching on the youtube version anyway because that helps us help you become famous by having your name right across the bottom of the screen if you donate little as a dollar help us out subscribe beer blues bs on Streamlabs, and that would be at streamlabs.com slash beer blues bs we're also on youtube for the video version and the audio version you can watch this whole train wreck happen live in person on youtube for the big old premiere every friday night yeah it's that awesome <clears throat> and we love for you to join us because there's a lot of stuff that you may not see right away but it's there, so then you got to rewind it, watch it all over again, because it's on YouTube. It's there. It's happening. Things are happening. It's a great time on YouTube at Beer Blues BS. Also, other audio versions. We're on Spotify. We're on Pandora. We're on Stitcher. We're on iHeartRadio. We're on Pandora. I already said Pandora, but we're on. Uh, I am the B Player FM, Podbean, and many other podcast services if you have any audio services out there you need to yeah yeah subscribe and the avalanche score yeah woo 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 five to two with 724 left in the third woo I never knew kidder was such a big fan of podcast audio services <laughs> yeah because you can hear that. Put that on repeat. That'll keep you awake. Tornado siren. Don't need any of that. Just need need the avalanche to score a goal, and that'll wake up everybody. <clears throat> and that might have been. I don't know if it's Ross Colton or if it's Zach Parisi. I don't know. I think it was Ross Colton. I think it was him, but Parisi was right there for it. And if uh, Parisi gets any credit, then another fighting Sioux hockey player getting some extra credit in the Stanley Cup playoffs, baby. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, as I mentioned in all of this fun stuff, we need you to help us. Please like, share, and subscribe. Put it on your page. Give us some extra traffic because we got to beat the algorithm. You know what I'm saying? You got to get some traffic to the show. Help us help you because we're, you know, funny. Usually. Lots of good stuff happening on this show. I mean, just look at this episode. <laughs> Prime case. That's what I'm saying. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> ah, Ross Colton gets the goal. Middlestat and Gerard get the assists on that. So unfortunately, Parisi not involved there, but he was ready to go. And he was on the ice for probably a plus one, I would imagine. Facebook, Instagram, we are on both of those. We post as much as we can on both of them. So drop us a comment, drop us a like. Please follow us and share the stuff as you can. It's free to share. You know what I'm saying? Beat the algorithm. Help us help you by sharing all the content. Good time. Having a good time. So we talked about the audio versions. Search Beer, Blues, and BS. We talked about the video versions on YouTube. Search Beer, Blues, and BS. Talked about Facebook. Talked about Instagram. Talked about our website, BeerBluesBS.com. <clears throat> Talked about subscribing at streamlabs.com slash beer blues BS. Now we got to talk about the final thoughts. And with a final thought, first, he's been thinking it's JS. He's got some thoughts. Let's hear him. 
Don't drink mystery liquid liquid out of baby food jars. And don't be people. Just be nice. It'll get you a lot further in life. Good sage advice. Thanks, JS. Have you figured out the scent yet? It's some kind of orange pine nut gasoline vodka <laughs> with this made on a ranch. Uh, I'm starting to feel bad here. I'm starting terrible. to feel bad. Starting to feel bad. Because I didn't really want to try it to begin with, but <clears throat> Nico helped me out and and gave me some. And then I was kind of regretting life choices at that point. <clears throat> but so I wanted to share him with JS because I knew that I would get this kind of reaction. So it was well worth it. I mean, I could, you could do the Google search and see what is the most terrible vodka you can buy. Yeah. Worst vodka ever. Nikolai Vodka. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is it is not that poorly made Russian vodka. Uh, Pinnacle, Burnett's, Taka, Popov, and Skoll. <laughs> None of those either. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I don't know, but it whatever you gave me was terrible. Well, we could say that it's just a chip off the old bottle. That doesn't help. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm trying. I, I don't want to just I, tell you because that'd feel like a letdown. <clears throat> my brain's not working, man. Like, I, I think we're just going to have to break it to him, Kidder. You know, I, I think that's the only way to do it. And, you know, make it known. Which delectable snack food is uh, infused in that vodka? Is this supposed to be the Skittles? No, no. Look, look at some of the uh, old uh, clues. You know, the chip off the old block. It'd be cheesy if you looked at the spreadsheet. It's not your kind of drink. It's a bit cool outside. Oh my god. You got it in the bag. <clears throat> yep. Be good at a ranch. Yeah. You feeling a little if red or a little blue? Anybody. Leaves a residue on your fingers. <laughs> this shit or maybe tastes. flaming hot. Are you if are anybody you thinks that this tastes like Doritos? Ah, need to be beat with the bottle. There it is. That is it's that, that is straight up paint water. <laughs> it is hey. legitimate Doritos brand vodka that brother Nico found in Nebraska because he likes to find all the random like is. Cool, I weird. hope they go bankrupt Everything. because that is terrible. I believe it was a limited edition run. I would rather drink the yeah! empty not go. Woo! <laughs> well, we know how Kidder feels about Dorito vodka. I was gonna say I never knew Kidder oh, was so excited about limited run vodka. He's back vodka. on the ice after having his nose broken open. I, I I would almost rather drink the piss warm five, five week old bottle of Phillips laying in the gutter than that crap. It's that terrible. was not good. Yes, I almost threw up when I tried it. <clears throat> anyway, we should uh, we should wrap this up. <laughs> I, oh, I, well, I need time. to bed. It's your turn I'm... for final thoughts. 
I mean, I was waiting for you so that I could make like a reference to Salsa Verde and try to give him another hint, and that's all I mm. had for a final thought. But you never oh. called on me, so <clears throat> I it was implied. You just didn't take the hint. Yeah. Uh, listen, don't come after the guy who gave you a bunch of hints, man. <laughs> I was trying hey, to help you. After today, like with the day we had, it, my my brain is done. Avs up six to two over Winnipeg in game three. Two minutes twenty seconds left in the third period. Let's go. Aside from that, um, final thoughts. <clears throat> it was NHL playing card day last weekend. I think it would have been last weekend. Ended up picking up a, a couple sets of cards here in town. Even bought a box of MVP hockey cards. And uh, Jaco, I got some <clears throat> got some good cards out of said box of booster packs. And um, I think I got this one in the uh, the specific day. Yeah, the National Hockey Card Day. Got one legend, Patrick Waugh. Nice limited edition card for Hockey Day. And then within the box, I got uh, Avalanche Miko Rantanen. At the time, Minnesota Wild, Zach Parisi. And then nasty. I hated those jerseys. Look at how garbage those jerseys look. <laughs> Looks like JS's thoughts on the, the mystery shot that he had there. The mystery drink. <clears throat> One Brock Besser, formerly of UND, now playing for, unfortunately, for the Canucks. And Brock Nelson, former UND player, playing for the Islanders. Got those uh, not only for Hockey Day, but also in the box. And then... Uh, happen to go to, uh, like I said, I had to go to the card shop to pick these up and they had a few rare cards for a dollar or $2 a piece and, uh, ended up finding a few, including Nathan McKinnon, sweet looking premier card in my final thoughts. I'm just going to say it. A signature silver Nathan McKinnon card. A gold uh, limited edition out of 113 Nathan McKinnon. Oh, and there's a fight between Mike Wood and some dude from the uh, Winnipeg Jets. So there's that. But this one's a really cool looking card. I love the foil cards. A silver authentic McKinnon card. And then to go along with that, a silver Makar card. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This one's pretty cool because it's a, one of the metal cards. So it's uh, it's all shiny of Kale Makar. Very shiny. Jess is like, I need another drink. <laughs> I need a bed is what I need. I am falling Same. asleep. Very mm -hmm. soon. Very soon. How about this one? Cool foil card of Kale McCarr. Kale McCarr, the only one that did, puts out cards because he nope. seemed to have like nope. 17 of his. That was only three. I had two. Yeah, yeah. Two McKinnon cards. How about an old school Joe Sackick card? The silver mm. black diamond. Whatever that means. This thing's cool. It's the ultra rare version. How about a Fapa card? A Peter Forsberg dignified foil card. 
That thing's crazy cool. I like it. <clears throat> this one's also really cool. An Alex new hook card, but with a piece of jersey in the card. So there's that. Uh, rookie card from Justin Barone with another piece of uh, the jersey there. That's Just really like cool. that, Kidder made himself a millionaire overnight. <laughs> Another rookie card signature from Justin Barone there, signed in front of people from the uh, NHL Players Association. Or uh, Sampo Ranta, another signed jersey card. I love the foil on these, too. That's just really cool. And this card's thick. Look at the size of this card. <laughs> like that's mm. it's kind of egregious, <clears throat> but really cool. Also, how about this one? Another Sampo Ranta rookie card, but the jersey piece is in the number of 2021. What that's do you think, cool. Howard? Yeah. A uh, Keaton Middleton. Gold authentic rookie card. And uh, Brock Besser Canucks card. And the Avalanche pick up the victory six to two over the Winnipeg Jets. So I'll take it. All, All right, right. Kater, you got about 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've already said pretty much everything I need to say about the things. The Avs won. What's really what I was waiting for to show a, a good victory. They're exchanging recipes for their mom's recipes on, uh, you know, some some good uh, banana bread recipes, uh, meatloaf recipes, maybe uh, their mom's marinara sauce. They're they're exchanging. Uh, quite a few different recipes. I mean, everybody's involved out there. There's got to be a lot of a lot of things happening out there. And Howard and I always love to say that you know they're out there trading cooking techniques and recipes and things. You know, my mom's marinara is better and spicier than your mom's marinara. Things like that. Anyway, I've already said the things. Beerbluesbs.com <coughs> and streamlabs.com slash beer blues bs thank you for joining us for this and every episode of beer blues and bs for js gunslinger he's about ready to go take a pallet of, of a tannerite out back and uh, let that thing sail to the moon for howard blues who's got kids and for me the man the myth the legend mark kidder just happy to be here have a great night. We'll see you in the next episode of Beer, Blues, and BS. Thanks for joining us. Keep your glass at least half full. There is free beer tomorrow. And just wait yet another week for another episode of Beer, Blues, and BS. You have been listening to a UA production of Beer, Blues, and BS. If you enjoyed the show, help others find out about it by rating the show or leaving a review at your podcast listening service of choice. Thanks for listening, and may your glass never be empty. UA Productions presents A Glimpse Behind the Curtain. So are we going to wait for JS, or do we just want to get started without JS? Well, <clears throat> you know, that's kind of up to you of uh, what you want to do i mean i haven't been getting a lot of sleep so if like the sooner i get to bed the happier i'll mm -hmm. be
Uh, okay. I have a feeling tomorrow's going to be another long day, so I'd be okay, but I don't don't want to be rude if he was like under the impression mm-hmm. that we'd wait for him. Uh, he did say he's <clears throat> going to try to make it, so he was going to do his best to get the you know food back and then get back to do this as soon as possible. Yeah. Well, you know, he's never had a problem kicking down the door. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that's the truth of it. Like, I I don't think he would be insulted if we started. I just didn't want air to have been like a verbal promise of "we'll wait for you, man." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I I know we've had shows where he jumped on and been like, "Wait, you waited for me? I thought you would have started." <laughs> so. I think we can probably get underway and he can join when he gets here. So, that's all right with you? Oh, I suppose. Okay. One last, uh... So we get the old vocal lubrication and, uh, <clears throat> kick this thing off. <laughs>